Hello and welcome to this special podcast as we look back at a remarkable Betfred Super League season. And we're doing a company of a man who used to be the voice of Sky Sports Rugby League for 30 years. Of course, it's Eddie Hemmings. Eddie, well, thanks. Thanks for coming off the golf course, first of all. <laughs> well, it's a great pleasure. Been busy? <laughs> Been very busy. And it's a great pleasure to be here and to let people know I've not died. That's the first thing. I'm still alive. I'm still kicking just about. Uh, and enjoying every minute of the Betfred Super League season. It was fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, there's so many stories, isn't there? We're going to touch yeah. on. I mean, there was a trip to a new camp, magic at Anfield, relegation going down to the wire, the nearly the Salford fairy tale. So many stories in this, in this remarkable season. You've mentioned them all there, apart from the big one, and that's St Helens and their record breaking season. To win the League Leader Shield by 16 clear points is a remarkable, remarkable achievement. And to do it for the second year in a row under the same man, Justin Holbrook. I mean, he doesn't know anything about finishing second, does he? He might find out next year in the NRL what it's like not to finish top of the pile. But what a fantastic year the Saints have had. Salford, you're absolutely right. The game going to Barcelona. Anfield, I mean, that has a special place in my heart, as you probably know. And to go back there on the first uh, day was, was brilliant. To look around and relive some fantastic memories supporting the Mighty Reds. And then the grand final and Salford so close, but more importantly for everybody, record viewing figures across the board, as they've announced in the past uh, couple of days. Fantastic news for the sport. It looks like it's on the up. The Kings are dead. Long live the Kings. <laughs> yes, record viewing figures on Sky on Saturday night, record viewing figures of the highlights on the BBC on Sunday. So let's just remind ourselves of the grand final of St. Helens versus the Salford Red Devils. The Saints fans down to our left, three quarters of the of Old Trafford will be cheering this Salford side on. And like you say, what a story, they nearly relegated two years ago. Wormsley now, Wormsley, short pass, first try of the game. And it's Morgan Moles who's got it. All stacked over on the right hand side. They go on the short side, they pass the ball back on the inside, and Zeb Tear gets the second try of the game, or does he? Chris Kendall says time off, let's consult video ref Ben Taylor. Out of the try! The referee thinks it's a try, he wants his video ref to take a look at this. What's he looking at, Stuart? Well, basically he wants to see if anybody is held in the scrum and uh, uh, prevented from coming Salford out. keeping it alive, that's the fifth tackle though. Saints defending well, keeping them at bay. It's with Lola Heyer, back to Hastings. Hastings running it, running it, and Bibby, Bibby will go in. And Salford hit back. Tyre hitting that ball at pace, 10 metres out, but good defence from George Griffin. His Coot now, Coot, Percival back across the field. Little kick from Percival, Amor is chasing, and he might have got there. One of the... Garsbrook as well. And Lussick with the tackle on Farge as he got the kick away. Oh, Evels. Oh, and another one. Niguana on the fullback, Evels. Holy moly. He thinks, I've got the ball. And it's back with Makinson who's gone for one point, and he might have got it. He has. And Tommy Makinson, don't jump on his back, Louis. <laughs> I think that's why he was sprinting away from LMS. Get so off don't me. touch me. Get don't off touch it. me. From range, Makinson has landed at one point. He certainly his first of the season. Bibby can't make any progress. Theophage, the scrum cap comes off. For the young Frenchman, that's what he looks like. There we are, great scenes on Saturday night at Old Trafford. And now we are skipper James Roby picking up the grand final trophy again. And as Eddie said, to win the league by 16 mm. points, a record, that was some achievement. It certainly was an achievement and, um, I mean, look at every face on that uh, picture there. Everyone celebrating the champagnes out. I'm sure the champagne flowed right the way through the, the course of the evening and into early hours of Sunday morning. This is what it means to win the Super League. You know, people talk about the Challenge Cup being the greatest knockout competition in the world of Rugby League, and it is. Take nothing away from Wembley, but Old Trafford is the night. 
is the biggest night of the Rugby League calendar, the biggest night of the Super League year. And look at the delight on all of those players. And if it was a long party, and I'm sure it was, well, don't they deserve it? You know, to, to it's a finish, long season. It's a, well, it's a long season. It, it doesn't start in the end of January for these lads. It starts in around about four weeks from now, their pre-season preparation, the discipline they have to show. Um, and, it, you know, it, it takes a lot, first of all, to win one match. To go on and win as many as they did is just the most incredible story, I think, in Super League that we've had. And the guy at the end there, Justin Holbrook, who is going back to Australia, he's led them to the top of the table now two years in a row. They've never been off the top under Justin Holbrook. What a remarkable legacy he has left. And how the new guy will follow him, uh, you know, I, I just tend to wonder. But he's got a squad, hasn't he? He's got a squad that is capable of doing absolutely anything. And they were, they played some magnificent stuff. Magnificent stuff this year, the Saints. It was, uh, it was, it was memorable for them and their supporters, no question. We only lost three games all season, but some people were suggesting that in the big games they didn't turn up because obviously it was a two semi-finals last year. Mm. It was a Challenge Cup defeat mm. to Warrington. How important was that 40-10 win in their first semi-final in the playoffs? When they're not wigging out. They put on a show, didn't they? It must have grown in confidence from that. The, the first half was probably the best rugby league I've seen for a long, long time from St. Helens. They absolutely blew the Wigan Warriors apart. And I think after that first half and indeed after that match, I think that was the moment when Wigan probably thought and their supporters probably thought, hey, we're not going to do it this year. They must have been mentally and physically drained by the, the pressure that this lot put on them. They were, they were brilliant from start to finish and the, the margin of the victory said it all really. And then of course they could put their feet up and they could, they could enjoy a week's, another week's rest before they, they went out at Old Trafford against the Salford Red Devils. I'm pleased they won it really because justice was seen to be done. If anyone has won the, uh, the season by 16 points, they're entitled to lift that fantastic trophy. Uh, and they were being talked about as chokers. Even Justin himself, he referred to it in the, the pre-match build-up. The two semi-finals last year, never really at the races. I mean, there were some great moments against them, but, you know, they should, have got to, they should have got to Old Trafford 12 months ago. They made it this year. The Challenge Cup final, I mean, Warrington couldn't sell their tickets because everyone in Warrington, believe me, thought that they were going to get rolled by St. Helens. So the Warrington public said, I'm not spending all that money going down there to see them get trounced. Now, of course, the world and his wife at Warrington were at Wembley on that day. They were, they were all there. They all saw it, so they say. But they were, they were outclassed at Wembley. They froze at Wembley, did the Saints. And Warrington took full advantage of it. So for them to put all that into the memory bank, put that behind them and come out and dominate Salford from start to finish on Saturday. I mean, Salford dropped the ball on the second tackle of the match, 10 metres from their own line. Yes, they got back to 12-6. They might have been 12-all, but for the obstruction. But justice this year was seen to be done for this set of players. How important on Saturday were Alex Wormsley huh. and Luke Thompson? How, how important have they been all year? They are absolutely fearsome sights. Imagine if you and I were stood in the opposition front row and they counted running. I know where I'd go. I'd be turning around and running in the opposite direction. <laughs> they are... They are immense. And for Wormsley, what a story. You know, his career was threatened 18 months, two years ago. It looked like he was never going to come back and play. Now he's on his way to Australia to pull on the Great Britain uh, Lions jersey, Australia, New Zealand, and Papua New Guinea and so forth. Uh, great. Two great front rowers. And of course, it's in Luke Thompson's view, uh, in Luke Thompson's case, the NRL apparently would love him. They'd have him tomorrow. For God's sake, you know, Super League, keep hold of your best players. I know a lot of them are playing in the NRL now and it's great for the international game. No, we want them here. We want them playing in the domestic competition here because that will attract yeah. sponsorship deals. We want them in the Betfred Super League, don't we? From Betfred and it will attract television deals from Sky Sports and whoever else. Because if you're seeing the best players week in, week out, it adds to the occasion. And we want Luke Thompson, Alex Wormsley... And if we could get the others back from Australia, all well and good. You know, I'm, I'm quite happy that the, 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 the international game, and I hope it does, fingers crossed, this winter, this autumn, this winter, I do hope it flourishes. But th this, is, this is the place that matters to me, the, the Super League. 
and these, these lads turning out at Old Trafford, turning out at Wembley, week in, week out, entertaining the public. Let's keep them if we can. That's a, a big challenge for all the clubs. Well, one man definitely going back to the NRL is the St. Helens coach, Justin Holbrook. Justin, after two and a half years, you can finally say it. Betfred Super League champions, just, just sum that sentence up. Yeah, absolutely. Great feeling. As you said, you know, we've fallen short a couple of times. So to be here tonight and, uh, you know, just so happy for everyone in the club, in particular the players. A little all the talk about you this season was how good you've been. Could you do it in knockout football? Could you do it under pressure? I think you answered that. Yeah, we did. We did it, you know, in, in the, so well in the semi final, but we had to do it tonight when it counted most, and, and we did. Has the emotion kicked in yet? No, I'm actually surprised. I thought it'd be a lot worse for myself, but uh, I'm just satisfied. I'm just so happy that, that you know, we finally got what we worked so hard for. Two and a half years ago, you moved across the other side of the world to a town that you didn't know. Just sum up your relationship with St. Helens for me. Oh, I love it. I've loved it ever since I got here. The day I arrived had been brilliant. Two days later, we had our first game, and it's been a great two and a half years. And just a word on your players. Yeah, I love them. They're fantastic, every single one of them, and, and they deserve this trophy more than anyone. Yeah, Justin Harborough is going to the Gold Coast Titans. Tough job because they finished bottom of the NRL last season. Uh, he's done a fabulous job. He's a really nice fella as well, Justin Holbrook. He's a lovely bloke. He really is. Uh, I remember um, I was doing an interview for, I think it was the Daily Telegraph, the week before I uh, hung up the microphone in, in April. And uh, we were actually doing it at St. Helens. I don't know why, maybe it was something to do with a try that was scored in 2000, I'm not 100% sure. But we were doing... we well, hear that later. <laughs> we were doing, which is about the only thing I've ever done. <laughs> um, we were doing the interview and we were walking around and he came from the middle of his training session across to shake my hand and say, thank you, thank you to me for all that I'd done for the game. All I've done is stand up and shout at my head off for 80 minutes about seven or 800 times over 30 years. He is, he is a... He's a scholar of the game. There's no question of that. He's a, as you say, he's a lovely bloke. He demanded and got the respect of his players. He got them playing again. And a lot of people have said that about Justin. And at this point, I'd just like to say that we shouldn't forget Kieran Cunningham in all of this. Kieran Cunningham is a hero at St. Helens. His, his statue is still above the stadium at the Totally Wicked. And I just... I just fear that Kieran has been completely forgotten. His legacy has been wiped out over the past two and a half years while Justin has been there. Yes, Justin rebuilt them. They were in some sort of a trough. I don't know why. Nobody, I'm sure, will be able to put the finger on why. But let's not forget that Kieran Cunningham was also a fantastic servant for St. Helens. Now, that having been said, what a job he did. When they lost at Wembley, I remembered last year when there was the Ben Barber business. Was he going? Was he staying? Was he going to be here? And I thought, that's one Australian, really, who cost St Helens two trophies last year, in my opinion. I thought the Ben Barber business did Saints no favours in 2018. And I wondered whether there was all the conjecture about Justin, whether it would be another Australian that would maybe have a bad effect on St Helens at the back end of the season. And when all the conjecture was still going on, and the, was it announced just before Wembley that he was going home? I can't remember. It was, it was announced in the summer for definite that he was going. Yeah. I just wondered, is this another Australian who is going to cause St Helens a few ripples at the end of the season? Thank goodness it didn't. Thank goodness he went home with a smile on his face. And I think, the, I think that the reception he got from the supporters at the end of the match at Old Trafford on Saturday uh, said it all, you know. Oh, look, he's always going to be welcome back at Saints now, isn't he, after absolutely, what he's done? Absolutely, And, I mean, I know he's a, he was an assistant coach in Australia, but he did a lot of work with the, the youngsters and the junior, Kiwi, uh, did the junior uh, kangaroos down there. He, he has something. He has, a, he has a touch of magic. He also has some very good players. Some very good players. And as you say, he's going from the top of Super League to the bottom of the NRL. It'll be fascinating to see his impact down there. Talking about the stock of coaches, Ian Watson's no. stock has obviously gone up dramatically. Good. Again, with all due respect to Justin, Ian Watson, for me, by a country mile, was the coach of the year. To go from 11th and battling relegation 12 months ago to third in 2019, and then to take the extra step and get them to Old Trafford. 
with minimal resources, with, as they describe themselves, themselves in their own words, as misfits, players that nobody else wanted, and to galvanise them into a team that could walk out at Old Trafford on grand final night in 2019 was the most incredible achievement from Ian Watson. Now, he was a great player. I remember seeing him. We saw some shots of him at the weekend as a, a fresh-faced youngster. Um, and I honestly, when he, when he took the job at Salford, I didn't know that he had this in him. He obviously did. Uh, and where he has got the performances from his team this year from, I do not know. Again, he's got a couple of very, very good players. But generally, they're all players who have tried elsewhere and failed. I look at Lee Mossop. Lee Mossop. How People has he thought come his on? career was over. Leaps and bounds. Logan Tompkins, always under the shadow of Joel and Sam. Um, Gil Dudson. The list, the list is endless. He, he even got Tui Lolla here from Leeds as a reject from Leeds and took to Lolla here to a grand final at the end of the season. Fantastic. What a story that would have been if he would have got to Old Trafford and won it. Never mind, just simply got to Old Trafford. Lolla here. And of course he had what a lot of people say is the jewel in the crown in Jackson Hastings. But Jackson Hastings, uh, Jones, Bibby, they're all going next season. It's a worry for Salford, isn't it? The big test now for, for, for Ian and for Salford is what they do in 2020. They'll all be talked about again as relegation candidates. I'm sure they will, with the, the guts of this Old Trafford uh, side being ripped away from them. But you never know. You never know. And, and that will show us just how good a coach Ian Watson is. And I think he's a very good coach. And uh, we ended up having the, the Man of Steel for the first time, a Salford player. The Aussies wouldn't give the Dally M to a Brit... Let me tell you that. They wouldn't. Johnny Lomax, James Roby, the, the list is endless of players who, who week in, week out, play like metronomes in the Super League. Brilliant, brilliant performers. Lachlan Coote, Blake Austin, Jackson Hastings come in and we all go, aye, aye. Where have these lot come from? Where have these come from? Now, Jackson Hastings is a great player. Jackson Hastings in the Salford side will always get three points as man of the match. Always. And I agree with the new system, by the way, of the way it's done. But he will always get three points. Tommy Makinson will get three points one week. J James Roby might get two. And Johnny Lomax will get one. The following week, it'll, that'll be reversed. But Jackson Hastings will always get three points. You know what I mean? You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Um, we've got some, some great players who do it week in, week out, year in, year out. And all of a sudden, Jackson, Blake Austin, great players not taking anything away from them, we all sit up and think, wow. I remember Jamie Lyon was exactly the same. The year that Jamie Lyon won the Man of Steel, I was on the voting panel, and it was said to me across the table, this has been the year of the Lyon, of Jamie Lyon. You couldn't argue with that. And this has been the year of Jackson Hastings. You can't argue with that because of what Salford have done and what he's done. But he's been a breath of fresh air. Wigan, with him in the side next year, Will be interesting. Be very interesting to see how he goes. Yeah, we've got certainly a great sign in. So, uh, Jackson Hastings was the uh, uh, Steve Prescott MBE Man of Steel. He's very self critical. He, he knows when he should have done something better, and he's one of the first to put his hand up and say, No, I should have done something there. I should have been better at that. He's very humble, and he's, you know, he's saying how, how good the Salford fans have been to him, and he wants to finish off the season, and that's all they want to see. He's you know, he's a very good player, you know, his, his performance has been outstanding. He's a good attacking player. If you give him a sniff, he'll, ex you know, he'll, he'll exploit that. He controls the games very well. He's, he's your typical half-back. I think he, he can do it all. It'd be the biggest achievement of my life. To know where I was at just before this stage last year, before coming over, to, to know that what I've had to do to overcome it, um, to move on the other side of the world, um, and to be what I've been through, to, to be able to walk up on that stage and to receive that would be, yeah, it'd be, in, it'd be up there for one of the best days of my life. He's one of them that's a competitor and uh, wants to win and they're the kind of players you want to play with. He's a winner by nature and he doesn't want people to stand in his way. You can see that he's, um, you know, he likes to take the line on. I didn't know much about him before he came over but in my opinion he's the best player that I've played against this year. The main of steel wouldn't be just for me, it wouldn't just be Jackson Hastings. You know, there's so many people that have 
played such a big role into me even getting my name tossed up in contention for that. It's not just me, it's, it's, it's for all of us. I get a bit, I get a goosebumps actually talking about it because of how much it means to me, so yeah, it'd be pretty special. Gives it back to Makinson, Makinson. Great defence. Wonderful defence by Jackson Hastings. Judson to Evels, it reaches Jackson Hastings now. And if this Salford are good enough to be in the top five. Surely will be it. Hastings, Hastings still going. He approach it. Salford keeping this next season, Jake Bibby, here is Jackson Hastings, likewise a cherry and white flare, and Hastings has left it to last to show his class. So congratulations to Jackson Hastings, the man of steel. And as Eddie said, he's joining Wigan next season. Let's talk Wigan uh, very, very quickly. Uh, finished second. Do you think that the speculation about, obviously, who was going to be the coach next season, do you think that did him no favours at the start of the season? Because I think it was one win in seven and then they went on that remarkable run. It was. They started badly, they improved, and then they faded at the end, didn't they? Um Sean Edwards, this time last year, was coming to Wigan. No question. He threw the pebble in the water, did Sean, and, uh, you know, Adrian Lamb, Ian Lennigan and co had to then try and pick up the pieces. I don't... I just wonder if he would have said, Sean, what he said when he did towards the back end of the season when he'd seen what they'd achieved. You know, they, they started poorly. They really did. They started, From Wigan's point of view, they started... Adrian Lamb looked like a haunted man. At some stages, there was a lot of speculation about whether he would survive to the end of this season. Then all of a sudden, they picked up, went on a fantastic run. I don't think it was a coincidence that Wigan discovered defence. After that first seven or eight weeks of the season, I think there was one match I think I remember coming saying, where has the Wigan defence gone that got them to the grand final last year under Sean Wayne? All of a sudden, after about eight, nine, ten weeks, they rediscovered Sean Wayne's defence and they went on that great run and they finished second. Um, the Sean Edwards business certainly will have affected them as a club internally. They tried to make light of it to the outside world, to the, to the general public, but I'm sure that all that speculate, will he, won't he, is he, isn't he, Sean Edwards. I mean, Sean Edwards, he walks on water as far as Wigan's public is concerned, but I'm not so sure that his stock is held in the highest now after saying, yeah, I and mean, they had all the trumpet, all the, you know, all the, the pomp and ceremony and he shook hands in front of the Sky cameras. He was interviewed by Brian Carney on Sky when the announcement was made, well, alongside Adrian Lamb. Adrian's the caretaker, I'll be here, we'll do this. I've got five rugby union stars waiting to sign for the, for the Wigan club. You know, it was, everyone was buoyant. Sean's coming back, the hero's coming back, the Messiah will return. Never showed up, never turned up. Must have an effect. Will they challenge next year? I think so, I mean, They've lost George Williams. They've replaced him with, with Jackson Hastings. Um, I, I, you would expect so. You would expect so. There's a few players getting a little bit long in the tooth. You know, sh will Sean O'Loughlin go around again? Tommy Lulawai is mid-30s. There's a few there who, who are a bit... But they've got such an, a, a strength in depth in the juniors. They've got more young players than any other club. They've got more Wiganers playing for every other club in Super League than anyone else can say, that you would think that the promotion from within, there's some great young players come through towards the back end during that run. Um, the Partingtons of this world, I'm thinking, the, the, the big young forwards, the Byrne, there was another one, wasn't he? You know, the lads who, they fear nobody. You know, the 2021, they fear nobody. They bash anybody. Uh, and I think they have that sort of aggression. So, yeah, Wigan, Wigan will never go away. Wigan will never be an also-ran in the Super League, no question. How do you put Warrington's season into words? Um, Warrington, sadly, I think, put the cue on the rack after the, the Challenge Cup final. How, how they go from that to what 
they ended up with, what was it, one win in the last 12? Well, one win in nine, nine I think, ten, in the Super League. Yeah. For, for the people in Warrington, it feels like 12. Uh, nobody, can, nobody can put the finger on why. Same players who went to Wembley suddenly couldn't perform again in the, in the Super League. Um, Benny Westwood's gone, of course, now, one of the, the great characters of the club, but he will be there or thereabouts in the back room. Um, they've got Gareth Widdop coming for next year. That's a, a big plus for them. Deck Patton flattered to deceive. Um, I think he missed the fact that Blake Austin was out for so long. Uh, so he has a big challenge to come. But Austin and Widdop together next year could be, could be interesting. We do forget that Austin was out for a long stage of the season after the injury. Um, I suppose the Warrington fans will say 7, 8 out of 10 because they went to Wembley and won. But the one they want is that one. They want to be there with a photograph like that in primrose and blue. And the longer it goes on, the worse it becomes for them because everyone says, oh, this Warrington's year? This is your year then, is it? 2020, Warrington's year. And it goes on and on and on. The sooner he breaks the duck, the better. Oh, we haven't got time to mention uh, everyone, but it could be a big season for Leeds, isn't it, after finishing eighth? Uh, it generally is. They generally bounce back. They do generally bounce back. Um, and Richard Agar has now got the nod and he will carry on. Um, they are such a big club. Leeds is such a, a big, big club. Um, I was speaking, funny enough, to Gary Hetherington at, at Old Trafford on... On Saturday, and he's trying to he's trying to back out, but he he almost can't because he's he's a he's a fan and he's a obviously a, you know the major shareholder, the major man of the Leeds Rhinos, and he, he he's trying to release the reins and let Kevin have his say, and Kevin Sinfield has had his say. Um, Richard Agar, a big job. He's a bit like Steve Price in many ways. Next year is a big job for him. You know, the Leeds have got to get back to somewhere where people think that they should be. Um, but as I say, huge club, massive support. Have you been to that new stand that they've got, that they opened against oh, yeah. Castleford? This side, you can see the cricket. This side, you can see the rugby league. Its catering is five-star. It is really, really Premier League. So they've got all the infrastructure. They just need a team on the field this time to, to carry them through in 2020. And, yeah, he's got a, he's got a big job, Richard. He really has. But, um, you know, he's, he, I think he's got the backing behind him. To, to move on and they probably need a few players but uh, you, you can't talk about Super League without talking about the Rhinos you know they could finish fifth next year and do it again well apologies if not mentioned uh, your team but absolutely love <laughs> the Betfred Super League I mean relegation going down to wire incredible wasn't it London Broncos 20 points and they still got relegated but there's a new team a new name in the Betfred Super League Next season, let's see how the Toronto Wolfpack got there. Just a metre short. McClellan. Makatoa, standing start. Lusick all over him. Acker's in there as well. And it's Connor Jones trying to find the line. One chance left for Fitliston Rovers. Dane Chisholm, it's a really intelligent kick. Sutcliffe is chasing it. Liam Kay is there. Wants to try this. Johnson's pounced on it. Johnson's put the ball down. Wow. He's given the try. Jack Johnson is fourth of the season. Four points for Featherston Rovers. The opener for the visitors. They are in dreamland right now. The start that no one expected. Nine minutes to go here. Featherston in front. Toronto desperate for something in this last nine minutes. Gadwin Springer. From the bench, what an impact he's having already. Andy Akers, brilliant fake, took three out, got the ball away, and they've got the ball down, have they? It's going to be an instant response for to untold. Josh McCrow and the man under the pile of bodies, I think. Featherston Rowe was ahead for just a couple of minutes, and Josh McCrow and the skipper just led by example. Wolfpack looking at the line already. What have we got? Wallace looking for the line as he found it. Blake Wallace under the post. Referee gives the try. Toronto Wolfpack hit the front. 
Look what it means to those players. There's something in there, perhaps, from Fenniston. Look what it means to Blake Wallace. He knows how important that four-pointer could be. Decided not to go for the two points then. Toronto will fight. They know that a two-score cushion could be hugely valuable. Wallace gives it to Bodie Thompson, bumps off one, plants the ball down, and Bodie Thompson scores. Two tries in five minutes for Toronto Wolfpack. And is that the moment where Brian McDermott's man are closing in on Super League in 2020? Well, the Wolfpack's third try has no finesse about it. It's big man on little man. Ormond Road with the tackle, McCrow gives it to Wilkin. Now it's Wallace trying to throw a dummy, he's throwing the dummy at Wallace on the afterburners. Oh, Brian. Feather still at creaking now. Mello with a dummy, Mello with another dummy, he's still going, Joe Mello. Gets up, touches the ball down, what does the referee say? Joe Mello might just have won this game for Toronto Wolfpack. They are to take their place in Super League next year, perhaps. It will take a monumental effort now from Featherston Rovers. They're dancing at the Lamport Stadium, a capacity crowd, and Joe Mellor win the try. Josh there McGraw. you go, kicking it off. Yeah, congratulations to Toronto Wolfpack that won the championship. Also, we sponsored League One, so congratulations to Whitehaven who topped the table and well done to Oldham who have been promoted through the playoffs. And as well, we sponsor the Women's Super League. Congratulations to the Leeds Rhinos who beat Castleford 2012. And that was brilliant to have it live on Sky for the first time. Eddie, Toronto Wolfpack are in the Betfred Super League. They are, aren't they? Um, I wonder when they're going to start playing home games. Because as I understand it, the season will start again the back end of January. There's, there's some questions to answer, I think, There still. is some questions to answer, because I've met people from Toronto and they say that in late January, February and a bit of March, the snow is that deep. So how they're going to play and what the logistics of the season will be, um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure that the powers that be at Super League have worked it out. I hope they have. Um, and maybe they will have to give away two or three of their home games at the start of the season, as they did in the Championship this year. If they do that, they won't necessarily roll over the Super League teams playing in this country at Newcastle, as they did Widnes, or wherever else they take the game on the road. So that will be a problem for Toronto. But they're talking it up, aren't they? Everybody is talking up this transatlantic competition that we now have. And it, and it is... It is fantastic to say, I mean, logistically how it will work, well, the jury's out, let's wait and see. But to say we're going to Warrington fans, Wigan fans, Castleford fans, Wakefield, we're off to Toronto next week. Who in their right mind would have thought that? I remember when we came back in 1996 on the plane from Paris and we'd just seen 18,000 people watch Paris Saint-Germain and Sheffield Eagles and Paris Saint-Germain had won. And Maurice Lindsay's words were echoing in our ears. This week Paris, next week Milan, then Barcelona, then Rome. We're going to all the major cities of Europe. Didn't quite happen, although we've been to Barcelona and we've been now in Perpignan in strength. They're all talking up this transatlantic link. I'm not sure about New York and I'm not sure about Ottawa, but Toronto have been knocking on the door now for a few years. They probably should have been there last year, but I doubt if they would have done as well as London. And well done, to Danny and the boys, Danny Ward and the boys in London. Ten, as you said before, ten wins. We thought they'd get two, if we were all honest. We thought and they might played get some great rugby. Two, and they played some fantastic stuff. All right, people criticise certain teams for sending, quote, reserve strength teams to, to play them. The game is a squad game. The coaches can play whoever they want out of their top 25. So let's not bleat about that. Well done to London. Can Toronto do better than London? Probably. Probably. The travel will affect the Super League teams, no question, when they go over there eventually. Will they get Sonny Bill Williams? If they get Sonny Bill Williams, as is being talked about, whether you love him, hate him, or have no opinion about Sonny Bill Williams and think or think that he shouldn't be playing because of what he has done in the past and the things he has said in the past, he will fill 
Super League grounds in this country. People will go to see Sonny Bill. So it's exciting. There's no question about that. How will they do? Can they do better than London? They should do. They should do. Which then, of course, puts clubs like Wakefield, Huddersfield, and I hate to say it, Salford, perhaps, with all their absentees during the close season, under even more pressure at the other end of the table. It would be lovely to see five clubs vying for the top. It would be nice to see five clubs vying to get away from the bottom of the table this year, next year, as opposed to, well, that's done and dusted. All the excitement's down at the bottom, as it was in 2019. You know, it would be nice. I think Toronto, with Brian McDermott at the helm, I think they might make a shake. But how it works, need someone like you to sort that out. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you hung up the microphone on... Good Friday, mm. after 30 years. You finished with, obviously, one of the biggest games mm. in the Super League as well, Wigan versus St Helens. Have you missed it? Until Saturday, no. Um, when we were going to Old Trafford, it seemed very strange on Saturday. I remember when Steve-O left um, about three years ago, and, the, and that was me done on the screen. Steve-O and I, our partnership was finished, so Neville Smith in his wisdom and rightly said, right, let's make a complete break and change. So I'll do the commentary with the boys. Brian Carney will present. Now, that, in that year, we had the World Club Series, the first year, and there were three matches on over the weekend and I was only involved in one of them. And I thought, oh, this is, this is odd. This is the first time in 30 years that there's been a major rugby league event and I've not been involved. So that was a bit odd. I left, as you say, Sky on... Good Friday after the Wigan St. Starby, and I thought, I'm going to really miss this. I really am going to miss this. I haven't. I haven't missed... I've missed the boys, and I missed the banter, and I missed Terry and Barry and Brian and Clarky and Wellesley, uh, and I've missed that. But until... I haven't missed the game. I haven't missed the game at all, which, which has surprised me. I've been very busy at the golf club, because being uh, Captain Chaos for 2019... You know, I've, had, I've, been like a, I've been like a travel agent. I've been sorting people out with tea times here, there and everywhere. Has your golf got any better? Do you know, I've, <laughs> I promised them at the start of the year, when I was made vice-captain last year, I said, I promise, listen, I'm off 20, uh, 20 at the moment, right? I promise I will do my best to get off that handicap at the start of my captain's year. I promise you. Well, I achieved that. I went up to 21. Um, <laughs> but during the course of this year, um, I actually won the July medal with a net score of 65. Now, the July medal is like a dog tag, but hey, who cares? The name is there. It's on the... the see? So I've got to pick that up in, from the captain. I have to shake my own hand and pick my medal up in the, the dinner on November the 8th, I don't know, 26th of October, whenever it is. I got down to 17.7. I've never been as low as 17.7 in my life. I'm 18.9 now, <laughs> so I'm back up to 19, but I'm, so I'm getting back to where I should be. So I can't, I can't play. I can't play at 8. I can't play to 18. No regrets, sir. Unt as I'm sorry, the, the golf got in the way again, as it always does. Um, until Saturday, no. And then that, that was my big gig. The grand final was my big gig. And we were driving to Old Trafford and I said, this feels strange. This is really strange. Got in, saw the lads, came up and had a meal with, with you and Steve and the rest of the boys and Fred, uh, and it was lovely. Uh, sat there and watched it. And some people said afterwards, oh, the referee was rubbish, he's denied this. And I, I, I've watched it and I thought, he's had a great game. Chris Kendall, I thought he's done really well. Of course, everyone who loses blames the referee. I've not watched it back yet, and I will. But until Saturday, I hadn't missed it. I missed it on Saturday. Now I've got another two or three months, I can put it all back to bed again. Come and do a bit of work for us next season? I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to. Right. Well, I've really enjoyed your company over the last half hour. I've really enjoyed the Betfred Super League this year as well. But we're going to leave you <laughs> with Eddie's best bits. <laughs> Enjoy this. Oh, yes, what a decade this has been. And we're here for the next hour to celebrate it all in style. It's wide to West. It's wide to West. Dwayne West inside to Joint. Joint, Joint. His enthusiasm and the way he calls it is, is, is awesome to listen to. Every uh, rugby league fan in England and right across the world will remember him. Always a massive, massive match. They met him. Blimey. I thought someone had shot him. <laughs> you know, we'll always go down as 
rugby league legend. Him and Steve-O back in the day, you know, they, they were the two guys. Never before had there been a magazine programme on television about this game. Absolutely breathtaking and nobody, nobody who was in this ground tonight or watching at home on television will ever forget the drama of that last minute. Let's get out of here, let's go to the break. We'll be back with all the action. It'll be live after these. Super League is growing and growing and he's been a big part of that. You know, he, he had his mark on, uh, on Rugby League and, you know, he'll, he'll leave a legacy. And then Blake Austin takes Lachlan Coote. <laughs> You're right for once in your life. Um, he's called some great games and uh, we're going to miss him. I obviously wish him all the best, but yeah, I, I wish he was continuing on. What he's done for Rugby League is brilliant and, uh, you know, I wish him all the best. Enjoy the retirement and I'm sure he'll be an integral part still of the game. He's definitely going to be missed. He's, he's been great for the sport, so... All the best with, with him in his retirement. It's been an experience, that's for sure. Thanks for being there, and bye for now.